Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at the unit facade, which is a new way to interact with units in Apex Path 2.0. Now, um, traditionally, when um, you had to interact with a unit, for instance, if you had to give it a move order, uh, you would need to get a hold of the interface exposing that particular functionality. In the case of a move order, you will get an iMovable instance. Um, if you wanted to inspect its velocity, you would have to get an eye moving object reference and so forth. So what we've done in Apex Path 2.0 is we've consolidated all these interfaces into one, um, which is then uh, easily obtainable on a unit. And then you can basically get all the information you need about the unit, call all the various methods on that unit um, just from one instance. So. Um, Let's have a look at that unit facade. Um, just quickly, we'll see what this scene does. Uh, it's super simple. This unit here will just move towards this square here. So, in the code, um, what we have here is um, it's just the start method that is uh, interesting right now. And as you can see, what we get, we get in a reference to our unit or to the unit's facade rather, um, simply calling get unit facade. Now this method can be called on the game object, uh, on any component that is already on the unit, uh, and so forth. So you can just call this method method pretty much uh, anywhere um, if you have some sort of reference to the unit, either a component or its game object. Um, the unit facade, as I mentioned, uh, consolidates all the different interfaces. So as you can see, I have a move to method on my uh, unit facade, which allows me to just assign it a target and um, it will move just as it did in previous versions. And if we just dot on this real quick, we can see that it exposes quite a few properties and lots of different methods. And all of these are the ones that are were previously available uh, and there are some some new ones in there. All right. Another thing to note about the unit facade is that it is uh, cached. So this means that this call is quite cheap. Um, once the unit um, enters the game world, it will actually register itself and create its unit facade. Um, so and then it will uh, cache it. So calling this method is is very cheap. Um, so you can easily do this in, in methods. You don't have to cache this uh, on your components in uh, a wake or the like. Now, um, while this unit facade consolidates all the existing functionality uh, that you would probably want to do with a unit, um, you might also want to extend it because you might have your own uh, methods on a unit that you would like to be able to call um, through this same interface. Um, and that is possible. So um, let's look at an example of that. As you can see um, in down here in mod update, I've actually already made some code that gets a unit facade of a different type, and then it calls a method on that type that wasn't that isn't actually available on the standard unit facade. So the extended unit facade. Um, as you can see, I just derive it from the standard unit facade, and then I extend it with the, uh, with extra functionality. In this case, we have uh, added the ability for it to call and manipulate the humanoid speed component. Um, so in the initialize method, I get a hold of a reference to that, and then I can add methods. I just added one, but I could add all the different methods that would allow me to uh, change the speed of the unit. So now I can at least change it to run speed. Uh, obviously, this, I mean, you would need null chicken and all that, it's just keeping it simple. Um, but to see that in action, as you can see, uh, we had it here. So I get a uh, reference to this extended unit facade and I can call run on it directly. Um, and in, in the scene, that would mean if I start my scene and then I press R, it will actually start running. So, um, this is basically all you need to know uh, to use uh, extensions. 
there's a, a slight uh, optimization tip that you can do um, in order to avoid uh, dual um, initializations. Uh, as I mentioned before, when the unit enters the scene, uh, it registers itself with um, the Game State Manager, and at that point, it will basically just register itself as a standard unit facade because it doesn't really know of th about this extension um, until you actually call it here. So that means that once you call it here, it will actually reinitialize this extended version and cache that one instead. So basically, it means that the first initialization of the standard unit facade is just a waste of time. So in order to uh, prevent that, um, you can create a factory um, that will instantiate your specific unit facade. As you can see, this is quite simple. You just make a mono behavior, implement this simple interface that ex simply returns an instance of your specific unit facade. This in turn will make the initial inst uh, initialization of the unit use this unit facade when it initializes the unit. Um, so you, don't, you won't have dual initializations. And you simply then attach that factory to your game world and you're done. So that's it for the unit facade. I hope this uh, makes things simpler. See you in the next video.